Baby. All right, guys. Uh, so I shot a bunch of footage. Uh, getting this game to this state, just getting it set up, ready to uh, be programmed. Um, so instead of oh, and, and uh, so yeah, I shot a bunch of footage, but uh, my mic settings were all messed up on it, and you could hardly understand me. So I have decided to instead redo getting it all set up i'm just going to tell you what i did and have faith in you that you can get something uh similar to this it doesn't have to be exactly the way i have mine set up uh i mean you, if you like another soccer field better use it same with the goals same with whatever really go crazy uh really all we need is just a soccer field and with some goals we need a ball uh the purple things we're gonna make invisible these are just triggers right now uh this is what this is what will detect if a goal is scored can't see our walls but we do have walls all around the field uh, on the out of bounds lines and we also got a ceiling that way the ball cannot escape the field so we don't have to worry about fooling with out of bounds um so yeah you just go to your toolbox and you just search soccer field and you'll you'll see uh You'll see a bunch of options. Just pick whichever one you like. Same with soccer ball. Uh, let's make the walls visible just so you can see what I'm talking about. Turn the transparency off. There we go. I want mine to be invisible. Uh, that's pretty much it. So, so the way you make a trigger though is you add a part to the goal. And you scale it up and make it a different color or whatever you want. Uh, make sure it's anchored. And then you want to scroll down in properties and uncheck can collide. You want that to be unchecked. That'll make it so you can go through the part, uh, but it'll still detect if something touches it. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, moved our spawn to midfield. We centered everything the best of our ability got a skybox in here uh there is something else so whenever you spawn in it's not going to spawn in uh the player's normal avatar we got it to where you have to use this guy uh this soccer player uh make sure the ball can move it can um so yeah the way you the way you get uh the way you make it so the player has to use a certain character, uh, this is the way I do it. I make my my Roblox avatar the same as the character that I want it to be. Um, so I made it this soccer player. Then you go back over to Roblox, and uh, we're going to use a plugin called Load Character. If you just go to your toolbox, sort by plugins, and search Load Character, you'll see um you'll see two options uh one free and one paid version i use the free one and it works great for me so all you do is once you got it installed is you just open it and you type in the name of the the roblox name of the guy uh, who you want uh the avatar of so see there's duck hive i spawned in r15 if that doesn't work for you try r6 um, you click that, you'll spawn it in the world. There he is. He is now in our workspace, named after the player name. Uh, we've got to rename it to Starter Character with a capital S and a capital C and no space. It's really important to get it spelled exactly like that. Um, something else we need to do though before we move it down to our starter player folder is we need to make sure the humanoid root part in our character is not anchored and it is so we need to uncheck that now we click and drag our starter character we're going to drag it out of the workspace and into the starter player folder and he disappears from the world that's fine and he goes down here I already have my starter character in so I'm just going to delete um so yeah that is it uh oh uh also we in setting up our 
uh, projects uh, to get ready for scripting. One thing I like to do is, as someone who, who came from using Unity uh, and use singletons in Unity, I like to make it a little bit more like Unity by creating two scripts, one on the server side and one on the client side, that will basically turn any module script that we make uh, into a singleton. So in our server script service, I'm just going to show you the script. It, I mean, it's not going to make sense by looking at it, uh, but just copy that, uh, name the script load server modules, and just just pause the video. Here, let me zoom in. Just pause the video and copy that, and that'll make it so you see how we got this game module script and modules, and there's nothing in here yet. Um, I like to rename module to just M, though. Um, it'll turn that like into a singleton, so we can access the game module script. Whatever we put in here, whatever we put in between these two lines right here will be accessible by other scripts on the server side, and that goes the same for the client side by here's the here's the load client modules. We want to put that in replicated first. Load client modules. Again, just pause the video and copy it. Uh, copy my script. Uh, don't worry about it making sense. Just trust me that it'll turn it into a singleton, basically, uh, which will make it a whole lot easier to, to build this project and to scale it down the road. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, you should be you should be able to get to this point without uh, having to watch someone actually do it. Um, again, just get it to how you like it. You've seen soccer field, soccer ball. I need walls around the field to keep the ball from going out of bounds. I need a trigger in the goal so that'll detect when uh, the ball enters the goal and a goal is scored. And uh, I get, you don't really have to do the whole starter character thing if you just want to use your avatar. That's fine. Uh, but if you do want to use a custom avatar, th that is how you do it. You can use the load character plugin. Uh, load it in. Just make sure it's named starter character, capital S, capital C, no space. Then drag it into your starter player folder. Uh, so yeah, in the next video, we'll actually get started in building this game. And yeah, see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.